In 1981, in his treatise Simulacrum and Simulation, French philosopher John Baudrillard wrote that information devours its own content. It devours communication and the social. He said that rather than producing meaning, it exhausts itself in the staging of meaning and called it a giant process of simulation. A hundred years ago, a new theory about human nature was put forward by Sigmund Freud. He had discovered, he said, primitive sexual and aggressive forces hidden deep inside the minds of all human beings. Forces which, if not controlled, led individuals and societies to chaos and destruction. The idea of a culture of fear perpetrated by the mass media to keep people following the status quo is not a new one. We receive around 3,000 messages from advertisers per day, with many seeming to offer a lifestyle which fits with Baudrillard's version of the hyperreal. A world which is bigger, brighter, faster, more colourful, more interesting. These ads try to appeal to a new version of person, someone who is more spiritual, cares more about their environment, is mindful of their health and fitness, has values, someone who knows better than to listen to a huge corporation. But really, they are doing what they've always done. Women's magazines tell us now to love our body instead of fat or wrinkle shaming while they sell the same products as before. Advertising tells us that we are individuals. What we wear, eat and the products we use serve to inform others as to the sort of person we really are. It's a code a form of tribalism. If you haven't got the latest gadget or wearing the right clothes, you're not in the club and that could affect your chances of meeting the right life partner, getting the right job, making new friends or having the best life you could have. Headlines sell newspapers. advertisers by audiences and the platforms which serve them. In a new digital age, online platforms that are outstripping TV and advertising revenue, and all your viewing choices are noted. Societies differ, but in ours, the major decisions over what happens in the society, decisions over investment and production and distribution and so on, are in the hands of a relatively concentrated network of major corporations and conglomerates and investment firms and so on, they are also the ones who staff the major executive positions in the government, and they're the ones who own the media, and they're the ones who have to be in a position to make the decisions. They have an overwhelming dominant role in the way life happens, you know, what's done in the society. Within the economic system, by law and in you know, principle, they dominate the control of resources and the need to satisfy their interests imposes very sharp constraints on the political system and uh, the ideological system. When you talk about manufacturing of consent, whose consent is being manufactured? Hey, As TV advertising evolves, marketers are increasingly able to use our viewing data to identify relevant target audiences and serve person-specific advertisements. Humorous culture is the new religion. We reward ourselves with retail therapy and our online viewing habits create profiles and downloadable data. We buy goods to convince ourselves of our own individuality, to separate ourselves out from the pack when all we are really doing is creating a profile which can be manipulated into a categorization of data. We are, without consent, becoming part of algorithms written to control and influence us. 
As long as we keep consuming and distracting ourselves from the real, we are buying into a global economy which only serves the rich and powerful. But it could be different. Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream. And we are the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. What's your problem? I'm a wine in 